Eddie, can you pray us in, please? Uh, okay. Is it Sure, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, so I'm going to the same God. Gracias, Señor, por permitirme estar aquí esta tarde. Ver a mis compañeros aquí, que todos estamos bien. Gracias, Señor, porque llegamos bien de nuestros trabajos y por los que no han llegado. Te pido, Señor, te pido por las por los compañeros que se han ido y de esperar su proceso. Pedimos que te indiques en el camino. Te pido por todas las personas que andan en la guerra, por todos los que están en, en la cárcel y por todos los enfermos y en especial para mi familia. Gracias, Señor. Amen. 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 I heard uh, you're praying for the guys in jail. Is that? That's yeah. awesome. The war and the hospitals. Nice. I put it in airplane mode. Otherwise, everybody will want to call me right now. Okay, uh, James or Santiago, chapter one again. Twenty-six to twenty-seven. Twenty-six to twenty-seven. Yes. We'll read it in uh, Spanish first. Go ahead, in español. Me? Anybody? Yeah, what are you guys? Si alguno se cree religioso, pero no refrena su lengua, sino que engaña a su propio corazón, la religión del tal vez es vana. 27. La religión pura y sin mácula delante de nuestro Dios y Padre es esta, visitar a los huérfanos y a las viudas en sus aflicciones y guardarse sin mancha del mundo. Amen. Thank you. Uh, James uh, 1, 26 to 27. Somebody read it in English now, please. Those who what? consider themselves religious they do not keep a tight rein on their tongues to deceive themselves. And their religion is worthless. Religion that God, our Father, accepts as pure and faultless is this. To look out for orphans, widows, and their distress, and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Yes, thank you. Remember when we started this series... We started off in Matthew chapter 23, and we'll be revisiting that again probably next week, where uh, Jesus is um, calling these the religious people, the scribes and the Pharisees, hypocrites. Um, Woe unto you, you hypocrites. And remember, uh, the, the reason for this lesson uh, is so that we can show the contrast between what we think acceptable religion is and then what James is laying out for us, what Jesus is laying out for us as acceptable religion. Some of your versions might say pure and faultless. Um, I like, where's Jose? He's always got that. I like the, he's got that reader's version. He left. Oh, dear. Okay. Um, so, yes, anyways, um, religion, right? Religion is, a, who can describe just briefly what religion is. Anybody want to take a stab at it? Following the set of rules that we need to buy by. Okay. Okay. That's 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 good. We're getting in there. Um, anybody else want to take a stab at it? What man thinks what God is? What man thinks God is? Absolutely. Anybody else? That's, that's what good. I was thinking too. That was a good that's one. That's good. It's a set of rules and regulations for, for, for what we think would be pleasing to God. Remember how the Pharisees started out uh, 400 years before Jesus' time with when Nehemiah and Ezra had come back from Babylonian captivity and they had rebuilt the wall and they had rededicated themselves uh, to God and so much to the point that they kicked out all of the unholiness out of Israel. They kicked out their foreign pagan wives, uh, everybody who wasn't going to get with God had to go, right? You ain't got to leave, but you can't stay here. We're a God-fearing people, right? And it says a lot about the importance of who we let into our world, right? Jesus prayed for, Jesus in John 17 prayed for the disciples. He prayed that not, that God, he says, I don't pray that you remove them from the world because then who would be my witnesses? He says, but protect them while they're in the world. So we know we have to separate our, ourselves and 
of course, that's a valuable teaching for every moment that we live. You know, our religion is just our external evidence of how intimate we are with God. The more intimate you are with God, the more visible on the outside, the more pious or religious you're going to seem. Uh, you know, I don't care much for these trite sayings, you know, and I've said them in an offhanded way that uh, people say, you know, I'm not very religious, but I'm spiritual. But anybody who brushes their teeth every day is religious. That just really doesn't do justice uh, in explaining the evidence that religion is the evidence of how we know God, how well we know God. Uh, verse 26, those who consider themselves, listen to this, who consider themselves, who profess, who say, I'm religious, say that they're Christians, say that they're holy. Uh, those who consider themselves religious and do not keep a tight rein on their tongues, deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. You know, there's two ways that we can look at this. There's saying that we're religious, saying that we're Christians, and doing things that are absolutely contrary to what Christians do and say. We have a little bit better of a situation with each other in the house. We can see each other in our boxer shorts and see how dirty our boxer shorts really are and how much holes we... <laughs> a lot of us run around in new shoes and new shirts but it'll be years before we buy new underwear, right? We see that here. And we give each other the grace and the mercy because we're brothers. But when we're out there in the world, people see our dirty underwear and they think it's a bad representation of Jesus because they don't know any better. And so, um, you know, we really have to be aware of, of how we talk and act out there amongst people in the world because we're trying to be a good witness. Um, and and so if we, we say that we're Christians, but by our actions and our words disprove it, you know, we'll be more understanding to each other than, than those in the world. So that's how important, it's really important to, you know, look, there's a, uh, Paul's talking to Timothy, talking about men and women in the last days having a form of godliness, but denying the power they're in, right? And this is, in a, in a sense, uh, in, in a large part, um, when you say you're religious, but you prove that your religion is worthless by the things that you say and do, you have that form of godliness, but you are not operating in that power. Let's go ahead and deal with that, please. Thank you, sir. Um, bring it. All right. Um, and then there's another way we can look at this is when we say that we're religious or we say we're godly people, and then we do these things like we're lying or cussing, um, yelling at each other, gossiping. Um, now, the person who is deceived is the person who has absolutely no conscience in doing these things. Doesn't care that their sin doesn't affect them. Right? And that person is deceived. There's a lot of people like that who want you to think that they're godly, but brothers, they aren't. Right? And, and all you have to do is spend a little time around them and you know that they're not. The person who, like... Some of us, we have to be taught, right? We, this takes practice. I tell you guys this every week, right? This this takes practice. We have to practice being good religious witnesses of Christ, so that the world can see that we're, you know, we're men and women of God. Um, so that we show the world that we're not deceived. So that we show ourselves that we truly do love. And honor God. You know, when we're swearing, we're cussing, we're calling, you know, uh, 
when when Jesus denied when Jesus denied or Peter denied Jesus three times and he it, it says he called down curses. I do not know the man. I do not know the man. And then he called down curses, right? Um, the Bible talks about you know not not letting profanity cross our lips. You know just a brief history on cussing, swear words, profanity. Something that's profane was meant to dishonor holiness, things that were holy. And so when cussing and swearing came about as a way to curse another person or to profane holiness and to mock God or to mock those who 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 love God and were trying to follow God and who honored God. And so for us it's become habit, you know. Um, it's part of the way that so many of us learn to talk. I don't know, maybe some of you had parents. I know a lot of us had grandparents. You never heard my grandparents cussing. My grandfather was fond of saying things like dad nabbit, right? And these things and uh, they wouldn't ever dream of using, you know, at least around women and children, they would never, my grandparents or my grandfather would never dream of, of using a cuss word. I don't think I ever heard him utter a cuss word. But in our generation now, right, it becomes more commonplace. So just a little bit of an idea of what, when, when we're swearing, when we're using profanity, that, you know, the, where that comes from is, it, it, it is in a effort to, uh, disrespect things that are holy. That's not what we're. That's not our teaching today. That's a contrast of what <clears throat> religion that God finds acceptable versus, you know, what people who aren't religious do. Remember, this thing takes practice, you guys. Um, somebody read um, in Espanol first. First Corinthians chapter three. Verse 9, capítulo 3, verso 9, right? Did I say it right? That sounded about right to me. Okay. Ha, ha, ha. First Corinthians. Tres nueve. verse 27 religion that God our father accepts as pure and faultless is this to look at widows and orphans in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world First Corinthians 3 9 Larry it says okay for we are co-workers in God's service you are God's field, God's building. We are co-workers or co-laborers. Right? So part of what we do here is we work with Christ to bring other people to God. Right? That's acceptable religion. Caring for widows and caring for orphans. Um, Ed, can you read Isaiah 61, 1, please? Right, here's a bit of a list here of what Jesus said he came to do. Yeah. Isaiah 61 1. The 
spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted, and to proclaim the captive, proclaim that captive will be released, and prisoners will be freed. Amen. Um, en español, por favor. Isaiah what you guys do every time you leave here and you go on assignment for Pastor Frankie or Pastor Raul, Pastor Paul, anytime Johnny sends you guys out here, you guys are representing in a ministry capacity and what you guys are doing. And I know it doesn't seem like it sometimes when you're out there sweeping up the raking leaves at the, at the big church or whatever you guys are doing over there, um, helping to build that, uh, you know, sanctuary. The sanctuary. But that's part of what you're doing because it all adds to the the overall effort, right? The, to bring people into the house of God. Into the church, but into, into our family. Whenever you guys go out there with Pastor Eddie, you know, you guys are out there feeding and clothing. And Jesus says, um, you know... Um, if you do that to the least of men, you've done that for him. Anything you do for the least of people, you, you, you do that. That is an act of kindness. You're doing that to Christ. You're following in his footsteps. And because of that, you're co-workers with him, right? You're co-laborer, right? You have the same job. You and Jesus work at the same job, right? And that's to, to witness, to bring people into Christ. We have a heart for other people who were addicted to drugs and alcohol. We have a heart for people who were in prison, who were in jail. We have a heart for others who uh, were divorced, who lost their kids, who, you know, we have a heart for people like us. And so does Jesus. You know, remember he told the Pharisees that it's not the it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick, right? And that's part of to set the captive free. That's what we're doing with Christ. That is acceptable religion. Working with Christ to perform his tasks here on earth. You know, anyone who believes in me will do the works that I am doing, right? That's what he says. Uh, Psalm 68, 5. You know, widows and orphans have a soft spot in God's heart. In Spanish, first, please. Psalm 68.5. It's in Psalm. Is that it? What is it? 68.5. Salmas. Salmas, right? Same thing. Sí, no. Y no me podía recordar cómo se dice. I can't remember either. Salmo 68. Yeah, uno. Oh, cinco. Cinco. Sí. Sesenta es seventy. I forget what sixty. Setenta is seventy. Sixty and seventy sounds simple. Yeah. I thought sesenta is seventy. Seis ciento. Seis. Seis ciento. I don't know. Siete. Siete. Padre, vamos a 
defensor de viudas, Dios es su santa morada, Dios hace habitar en familia los desamparados, saca los cautivos de prosperidad, mas los rebeldes habitan en la tierra seca. That's okay, that's okay. Look, Psalm 68, 5, Salmas. A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. You know, and there's a couple verses. There's a few verses that that um, God reveals his heart, his caring heart, and his, his, uh, his mind of protection, his thoughts of protection for widows and orphans. You know, these are people that don't have anyone to to care for them they don't have anyone to protect them and so we are God's we are Christ's co-workers so we are the instruments who do God's work in this planet right God uses men faithful men and women to accomplish his work here on earth and one of those things is when we have a mind to care for widows and we have a heart to care for orphans that is acceptable. That is pure and faultless religion. Watching our tongue and doing the same things that God was having us to do. Caring for those who cannot care for themselves. Protecting those who cannot protect themselves. You know, when we have a heart for the same things that God has a heart for, our religion is acceptable. I know that's redundant. Um... Mark 12, 31a. It's just the first part of that sentence. Mark 12. I probably got this a little bit out of order, but you know, our religion is external. It's outward. 1A. Thirty-one. Go ahead, guys, as soon as you got it. I don't, I don't think that one's it. Um, no, it's it's it. I think it's 37. I think it's third. No. Capitulo. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, hold on. Uh, I'm looking for Jesus said, by your words you will be acquitted. Go ahead, go ahead. Both. Okay. Uh, for by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be Okay. By your words, you'll be justified or condemned. So, the things that we say, right? This is just this is all just saying what religion is. It's the things that we say. It's the things that we do. Religion is also inward, right? It's something that takes place, of course, inside of us. And as 1 John 3, 3, it says that any man who has this hope purifies himself as he is pure, right? 
caring for widows and orphans in their distress and abstaining from the pollution of the world. I mean, it's simple, really. We can't let anybody tell us, look, nobody has any business telling you what the way you should worship, the way you should, or the way you should uh, uh, go about your acts of religion. Because if what is coming out of your mouth is pure and your actions are pure and your behavior is pure that's acceptable in God's eyes you know that's acceptable in God's eyes you know we want to have mercy on 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 others we want to feed hungry people we want to teach them about Jesus. We want to show them that there's a way to eternity. You know, if you ask anybody on the street, or if you ask yourselves before you met Jesus, the, what you need more than anything in this world, you would probably say money, health, right? You would probably say you want your wife to, you know, call you. You want to see your kids. You just, you, you want a job. But you know, the most important thing that nobody ever asks, that is the most important thing that any of us ever need is forgiveness. Nobody ever says, well, what I really need is forgiveness of sins. And that's the most important thing that we need. That is how deceived the devil has us. And that is how ignorant we are. There are people out there, you guys, that, you know, don't have, look, how am I going to put says? You know, Paul tells the Thessalonian church, he says, uh, if you don't work, you don't eat, right? This is the, this is what we're holding to, right? It's in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. He said, no, you know, we, people expect something for nothing. But I'm not going to enable somebody to go further into their habit. You know what I mean? Like I'll feed you if you're hungry, but I'm not going to give you money just to get just so you can go out and get more dough. You know, I think I've expressed this to you guys before. I find it very hard to give money to a lot of people anymore when those blues are so cheap you can die for two dollars. Literally. You know? You can smoke some blues of two dollars and die. And I, I can't enable that person. You know what I mean? Two dollars. We don't want to enable somebody in, into their sin. But, you know, we, we certainly want to be able to show them better. You know, we want to be able to show them ultimately that what they need is forgiveness of their sins. You know? Um, not too long ago, I had a a brother who, you know, was talking about how he had remained sober and how proud he was that he remained sober. And and that's great. Yes, we need to remain sober. But there's no mention of God anymore. You know, there's no going to church anymore. Hasn't read his Bible in months. But he's stayed sober, right? And... Look, that's important, but there's nothing more important than cultivating a relationship with God. I don't know why I bring that up. I just, you know, we need to check our priorities. You know, we need to understand where our priorities are at. I'm going to, I want to share a verse with you guys. All right. That's going to unlock the mystery here. <laughs> If anybody's feeling self-condemned. Alright? Look. You know, we see people. And, and a lot of us. Most of us probably did grow up with both of our parents in the house. Seldom is there a household anymore. Where both parents are present. And so. Men and women. Young men and young women. Grow up. 
not knowing how to honor their parents, not knowing the Father's love. And so when it comes to their Heavenly Father, their foundation is, is, is not right. And so then we come into this world and coming out of a world of drugs and partying and fornication and gangs and violence and prison and and we we don't know how to act we don't know how to show what you know true religion we don't know how to show that we're that we're new creations and um, it just guys it takes practice it takes practice so just don't give up don't ever give up I promise God will never give up on you. He never, he hasn't given up on me. And, um, you know, if you, if you know some of my history, <laughs> some of the things that I've done and been through and said, been a part of, and, and I stand here a living testimony to God's mercy. So do you. Um, Titus 2, 11 and 12. This is such a powerful verse, you guys. Can I get that in Spanish and English again, please? 998. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. 12. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. Let me 13, too. For we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of our glory of great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Read that again, Larry. While we wait for the blessed hope. No, the whole thing. 11 through 13. Okay. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness, the world, and worldly passions, and to live self controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In Espanol, por favor. Porque la nace de Dios se ha manifestado para salvación. Good, yeah. Guys, it's the grace of God, right? What is the grace of God? Mercy. Grace. His power. His forgiveness. His patience. Patience. Endurance. Love. Salvation. Salvation. That's the grace of God that offers salvation to all men. And this is this is the powerful part here, you guys. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope. You know, nobody hopes for what they already have, right? And what is our hope? What is the one thing that we all hope in right now for? Our salvation. We have our salvation. But the effects of our salvation, right? Eternal life. Eternal glory. That's the thing that we all hope for. And so until we achieve that, we have the grace of God that teaches us to say no to drugs, to say no to alcohol, to say, to say no to women you know, that aren't our wives, to say no to anger, um, to say no to stealing, um, to say no to acts of the flesh, to say no Satan, this life takes practice. Religion takes practice. Um, and so just remember that you guys have the, the instructions right here. So do um, you guys have any questions or comments? That, that's all I have tonight. No? Remember, the grace of God has appeared 
that offers salvation to all men and it teaches us to live, to say no to ungodliness, right? Worldliness. It teaches us to live self disciplined lives. It's God's grace. That's what am I saying here? This is not, it's not, you know, and Jesus puts the Jesus put all the work in. We just have to we just have to obey it. That's it. Easy stuff, right? Easy stuff. Guys, you, when you leave here, you don't ever have to come back. I mean, come back and visit. But you don't ever have to come back to these places again. You don't ever have to go back to prison. You don't ever have to go back to drugs. You don't ever have to go back. Because God will teach God is teaching you now how to say no. Break the chains. Break the chains. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Right? And you get up tomorrow. Life is. Uh, can I say something? Like, yeah. I try uh, a lot of times. Stop doing that. Drugs. Get in jail. Uh, deal with a lot of emotions and all that. And I want to be straight, but I, I try, I try, I try. And I don't know why I'm here, but I, I feel good now. It's awesome, brother. I feel better. It's awesome. And what I try to do is pray more of my God. And I don't know. I want to have Maybe I'm trying to do I see you, you, you're talking about the witness, the, the religion, what is religion, and I see, like, a lot of, from here, a lot of guys from here, they, they're homeless, and now we are different, you know, we are homeless, and we are like a family here. Yeah. That's what I see. Amen. You know, you keep trying, and just, you never give up. You know, what's that, what's that proverb? Ed, that says that no righteous man may fall seven times. What you do? Uh, he, gets up again. he gets up again. We just keep going and keep going and keep going. Yeah, we are. We're a family here, guys. We are a family. We're brothers, and we're going to be together. We're going to be together forever in heaven. So if we have any issues with one another, another, we might as well just get over it. <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> Because we're going to be living together for a long time. Amen. Anybody, um, does anybody have a, a, a heart to pray out for us tonight? Anybody? Okay. Lord, Heavenly Father, I just thank you, God, for the for the word that you speak to these men. I, I thank you that you are our teacher, and you teach us everything we need, God, to get closer to you. Um, Lord, just touch the minds of, of my brothers so that they, um, so that your salvation guards their thoughts, Lord, like a helmet, God. That you're, you would just touch their hearts, Father, and, and, and guard their hearts. Be their breastplate, Lord, that, uh, that their faith, Father, would be guarded by you, Lord. Uh, protect the word from, from being stolen from the enemy, God. Um, God, continue to work in the hearts of their family, uh, in the hearts of uh, those who they seek forgiveness and, and, and resolution from. Uh, God, we thank you for our beds tonight. Uh, we thank you that uh, we don't have any bed bugs, and by golly, if we do, we, by your strength, we get rid of them. We thank you that we have full stomachs, and we thank you, God, that we are able to place our loved ones in your hands for, for, for comfort and protection. We ask and thank you for these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.